Hi, my name's Leo and I'm a boat builder and a sailor. Back in 2017, I bought a very old and quite famous wooden sailing yacht for the price of $1. And since then, I've been rebuilding that boat from the keel up with the help of a lot of amazing people. In this video, we're going to be looking at some really interesting woodwork uh, on deck, looking a lot at the sills, which Clifton has been diligently manufacturing uh, for the last month or two. Um, and they are teak pieces that go underneath all the hatches and separate them from the deck planks. One more piece and the sills are roughed out. That's exciting. I'm excited. Then I can start the scary part. <laughs> Profiling all this stuff after this all this labor investment. Yeah So the sills are basically uh, shaped pieces of teak which run around the outside of all the deck openings underneath the hatches or in the cockpit underneath the cockpit combing. Clifton has now already glued up and shaped all of the sills to actually fit the boat and that was pretty complex because none of them are straight or flat in any direction. Uh, they have to be curved to match the camber and the sweep of the deck. Now before he could start making the most complex sill pieces on the corners of the cockpit, uh, he had to make and install a small oak blocking knee uh, which accepts and supports the end of the deck planks and that curved piece of sill. Uh, that little knee was rebated or rabbited into the top of the deck structure and screwed into place as well. I don't fit in here. I don't fit in boats. Interesting. Um, it's not something I really checked out before I got into boats, but as soon as I started getting in boats, it dawned on me that... That you're not a boat-sized man. I'm bordering on freakishly tall. <laughs> nice. This little knee is here to catch the plank end fastenings where the cockpit combing starts next to the house. Above this, there's going to be that nice radius piece. Uh huh. That's the template recorded all my curves on it. Here's the piece of teak that I'm going to take it out of. The outside part of the curve I can cut with a bearing bit, cove bottom bearing bit on the outside because that bearing will follow the outside of the piece. This part I don't have anything, so I have to make a guide. Let's see how we did. I doubt I'll cry on camera. And you can see all this is gonna go away rather easily. This outer radius, I can tackle with this bit. Clifton, finally. I'm, I'm pretty messy. You made a mess. I love this kind of mess. You like that smell? I wish people could smell that, that teak yeah. dust. Mm, peppery. Mm -hmm. You're amazing, Clifton. Don't, 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 don't go telling stories. <laughs> Yeah, put that on the tape. Yeah. 
inch and a half, 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 and a little better, which is what I want at the tip. Today, I shaped the sill under the corners. There's gonna be a nice radius corner post. These straight line pieces are going to be hopefully a lot easier to shape. I can just run the bottom bearing bit down them and all my marks are lining up so it looks like that's gonna be that easy. Feeling good that this is going to be shaped today. Well, Clifton sills are looking really slick um, and got some more really exciting news coming uh, pretty much just after lunch. Uh, hopefully, we're going to have some new tanks arriving. Um, but first, got to head over to Jen's to pick up some of her famous Stromboli. There's got to be a better way to cut Stromboli. Wait, Patrick, Patrick, it's called a knife. <laughs> but in all seriousness, uh, costs on this project are skyrocketing uh, at the moment and recently. And the money that we're going to get paid to talk about these knives is going to pay for uh, a really fancy fridge and freezer unit uh, and a couple of slap up meals for the crew. <laughs> Kamikoto knives are made with high-quality Japanese steel using traditional methods. For all you home chefs out there, I hate this so much. <laughs> <laughs> I like to season my purple heart with just a little bit of salt and pepper. The knives come in this beautiful, durable ash wood box, which would make for a great gift. Or mallet. Damn, it is durable. <laughs> Hey Leo, did you know that each of these blades is individually inspected? It makes for a perfect edge. Great for shaving oak. Not bad. I'm gonna get rid of all of my wire strippers. But I hate paying full price for stuff. Hey Nick, you won't believe this. Kamikoto actually has several special offers right now. <laughs> Well, we had a lot of fun at making this ad. Sometimes we need to take our mind off the boat for a minute. Uh, but I have actually genuinely been using these at home for a few weeks uh, and I do really like them. Uh, each knife has a lifetime guarantee and they are apparently used by Michelin star chefs all around the world. So uh, you can get an extra $50 off of these uh, using our special promo code SAMPSON50 and there'll be links below the video and up here. So thank you to Kamikoto for uh, giving me some nice knives, uh, paying for our refrigeration system, as well as some nice slap up boozy meals for the crew. Thanks. Nailed it! <laughs> the water tanks get pumped yet? <clears throat> yeah, they should be here today. I like to imagine you never talk to you again. That kind of has to be done in two years. Yeah. Nick thinks that I'm in trouble. <laughs> you are. He's like, Nick, hey, tell Patrick I don't want to talk to him anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Nick, will you read Patrick? <laughs> <laughs> Patrick, you're an asshole. <laughs> Sincerely, Leo. Retain that information. Yeah. Just, I'm more confused. What's the name on that? Uh, Leo Golden? Oh, that's me. Okay.
So our water tanks have arrived. Uh, they're made of stainless steel. They're going to go uh, underneath the sole in the bilge in the saloon and galley area. Um, they were built by Patriot Marine Fabrication in New Jersey uh, and they are beautiful. Really nicely made, uh, really nicely welded. Now the fit of these into the boat is, is going to be pretty tight and pretty critical because I was really trying to make use of uh, every inch of space down in the bilge. So I made a pretty detailed model. Um, but I'm a little bit worried if they're going to fit or not because I'm just not quite sure how accurate my model was. So um, there's you know, less than an inch to spare, um, but we're going to put them in and keep our fingers crossed. Make sure you got some app dog on it when you cut it. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> oh, <laughs> me. Sorry, dude. Oh my god. Ears, y'all. Everybody okay? Yeah. I think you won't have enough up dog on it. Fat <laughs> washers up there? Yes. I got the fatty one. You one. <laughs> oh, sorry, I already, you already gave me some. I gave you five, five remember? Okay, what's this that? Your message? He said he doesn't need it. Good God. <laughs> he said thanks anyways. He appreciates it. Oh, great. <laughs> Does anyone check the layers? Guys, <laughs> that whole red face is a good look on you, dude. <clears throat> what do you think? Yep, support a tank. <laughs> So our water tanks do fit, which is a huge relief. Uh, it was a very tight fit, but that is how we designed them. So really, uh, that's just a testament to the skills of the people that made these tanks. Uh, that was Patriot Marine in New Jersey, and uh, they just did a great job. Great communication, great speed, and beautiful tanks. So I can't recommend them enough. Now to get such an accurate design, we did a lot of work. Uh, first making uh, door skin models uh, and then later we had a CAD design which we put into software so we could actually use a 3D point cloud laser scan of the inside of the boat to locate these tanks in the bilge and check if they were going to fit. So really cool to be able to use such modern technology on such a traditional wooden boat and that enabled us to make really efficient use of this space. Now these tanks are actually load bearing, they're fastened really well into the frames, they're going to have a couple of little blocks underneath them fore and aft um, and then the sole bores will sit directly on the tanks on thin bearers which will run on top of the baffles inside the tanks. There's three baffles inside each tank, there's two inspection hatches on each tank, there's a ultrasonic sending unit on each tank which tells you uh, how much water is in the tanks and again these are fresh water tanks so this is for drinking water um, for washing showering water etc um, and they'll be fed by a water maker as well as from the dock uh, and then the outlets are on this end at the lowest point uh, and there's various 
fill and other inlets and outlets for various things. Each tank holds approximately 72 gallons, so that'll be a total between them of uh, nearly 150 gallons, which isn't a huge amount for a boat of this size. Um, generally, you should plan on a gallon per person per day. Uh, but these will be being topped up by the water maker. So that should work indefinitely for coastal cruising. Now, anytime I'll be doing a long passage, I'll be taking supplemental water um, in smaller containers elsewhere in the boat in case the water maker fails. And in that situation, it's actually good to have lots of smaller containers anyway, in case you get contamination or a leak in one of your tanks or one of your containers. Now, I'm sure when I said tanks, a lot of you thought I was talking about diesel tanks, because of course, in our last video, we had a big diesel tank disaster. Um, we haven't got our new diesel tanks yet, of course, because that was so recent, uh, but we have got a plan. Uh, we're going to be going with uh, fabricated aluminium, or aluminum, as some people might call it, <laughs> tanks. <laughs> uh, we're going to be going with aluminium tanks and um, they're going to be made nearby um, from another 3D model CAD drawing that we've been developing. Now Clifton has been having fun uh, making curvy bits of teak for the deck, uh, so now it's my turn, I'm going to make some curvy bits of purple heart. So the piece that I'm about to make here is the lower part of a block which is going to go on top of the deck right up at the bow uh, just on the port side and it's going to receive the bulwarks as they come around and they're going to sort of terminate into this rebate on this block and then this block will lead up towards the stem and it'll have the chain roller for the anchor chain in between this block and the stem. Now this is actually a really unusual arrangement it's not something that I've ever seen on a, a boat like this uh, and it does look a little odd but it does make some sense because you know what often happens is the bulwarks go all the way to the stem and then a hole is cut through the bulwarks for the anchor chain and the stock of the anchor to go through um, but with this arrangement there's more of a slot in between the bulwarks and the stem and that means you could actually pull your anchor right up from its uh, stowed position you just pull it up onto deck really easily which would be really nice and you can also just pull the chain over the cap rail if you ever need to so although it's unusual there is some logic behind this and because it's so odd or so unusual and quite characteristic of the boat I think it's gonna be really fun to to replicate that
ding dong out? No. No, not me. <laughs> Have fun with that, dude. You gonna say anything, Tyson? No. I don't think so. So I just called the Coast Guard uh, about that boat on the rocks there and uh, that's all we can do really. Hopefully they're gonna do something about it. The prevailing wind here is from the west, which blows that way, but every now and then it blows really hard from the east and you get a lot of boats dragging anchor and quite often they end up on this beach. So Clifton has now done most of the shaping on the sills and they look really excellent already. Uh, he still has to glue them, bed them and fasten them down to the boat. Meanwhile, my uh, bulwark termination piece uh, is coming along nicely. Uh, now because it is a kind of important structural part and because at the moment it's got exposed end grain on its front and its back, I've actually decided to put some uh, structural sort of purple heart posts on the front and the back of that piece. They'll be glued and screwed into it. 
um, and they should make it stronger, tie in the two pieces together, um, and also prevent end grain checking uh, on that exposed front part, which is overhanging the outside of the boat. I also have to add a long graving piece uh, to one side uh, to get rid of a check uh, that could cause problems later down the line. Now, after that's done, uh, I'm gonna have to drill some really long holes to be able to bolt it through the deck and the deck structure. Now, that's gonna be challenging because the bolts are gonna be about two foot long um, and the end of the drill has to come out inside the boat uh, within a very small area. And if I miss that area, it's gonna cause a lot of problems. smell of autumn Don't want to go I want to stay Red, gold and brown That's when I saw him. I don't know why But I shed a tear Up on the ridge Clouds were coming But in a way I could see quite clear up on the peak, the winds are really blowing You know I don't mind this time of year So that went about as well as I could have hoped. Both of the holes I drilled came out uh, in exactly the right spot in a small gap between the beam shelf and the planking uh, underneath the deck. So that's great. That means the bolts should work out. I've just got to thread, uh, cut and thread some bolts um, and then I can get these bolted down, which will be a lot more secure than uh, just screwing or lagging them down to the deck, of course. Uh, so that's the hard part, really, I think. Uh, just got a bit more shaping to do now um, and then hopefully I can get them bolted and bedded down onto the deck. In the city wasn't really breathing 
I couldn't see past the cloud of smoke Head bowed down to keep in the feeling But out of your slumber you might have won But up on the mind bodies were flowing Just like the air from the golden tide My spirit rose when the music got going You know I don't mind this time of year So this Borg termination piece is finished and installed and I'm pretty pleased with it. It was a lot of fun to make and it feels pretty solid. There's a couple of big 5 8 bolts going down through the deck structure and eventually there'll be actually a chain roller in this gap here and part of that will be a big bolt that goes through this piece and into the stem so that'll support it even more. The anchor chain will eventually run between these two pieces um, and over the chain roller and then when the anchor is stowed it'll come right up to the stem and the stock of the anchor will go through this gap. The bulwark planks will eventually go up against the stanchions here um, and then uh, rebate into this notch in this block. The stanchions will get cut off about here and there'll be a cap rail, teak cap rail hopefully, uh, going along the top of all of this. Like I said, this is a pretty unusual detail. I've not seen this on many boats, uh, but really cool to be able to replicate such a unique part of this boat. And it does make a lot of sense, I think. I think it's gonna be really nice to be able to lift the anchor up from the foredeck without actually pulling it all the way outboard through a hole in the bulwarks. Now, this is one of the fridge freezer units that the Kamikoto knives paid for. Um, this just arrived and uh, it's pretty flashy. It's a drawer, it pulls out and this is going to be mounted uh, underneath some of the couches in the saloon and there'll be a freezer so this is where all the ice cream will go and uh, there is another unit uh, as well on the way it's different it's a drop-in fridge unit which will be accessed from the top and it'll go inside the kitchen cabinets but pretty cool to have this uh, it's not going to be installed for a little while got to get all the sole down um, in the saloon first Right now though, we're gonna check in with Clifton. Uh, he's been doing really well on the sills. Uh, all he's got to do now is uh, glue the joints, bed and fasten them down to the deck, uh, and then they'll be finished. So I'm really looking forward to seeing them in place. We are a go for installing the sills. Um, I've got these sills down here on the bench and they're back primed with paint uh, to isolate them from the deck beams and from the Dauphinite bedding compounds. The miters, however, we're gonna be gluing up with G-Flex epoxy as per our epoxy wizard's recommendation uh, featured in the last video, Russell Brown.
Are you looking good, Clifton? Thank you. Are you I, pleased? I feel good about it now. Those things are going to be there for a while. Uh, the, in a hundred years, the next guy that restores this boat will be looking at those parts. So the seals are complete and they're looking fantastic. Clifton did a really great job on these. They're a lot harder and a lot more complex than they look, especially with these mitered half lap joints in every corner, the coves, the rebates for the hatches. Now seals like this are not essential for a traditional deck construction. There's a lot of boats which don't have these uh, and that's fine. Uh, but if you don't have some kind of seal, you have to either have the hatch sides coming down to the deck structure which can cause problems with corking in between the hatch sides and the deck planks, or you have to have them sitting on top of the deck planks, which again can cause problems with uh, water ingress and replacing deck planks. Having sills like this takes care of all those problems, um, plus it raises the joints above the deck where they won't be sitting water, um, and they look pretty cool. They are a lot more work though, so that is the downside, um, but I'm really pleased that we went ahead with these. Now, of course, there has been a lot of work which hasn't been in this video. The whole team has been working really hard and doing a really great job. So big thanks to all of them. Uh, we'll hopefully be catching up with a lot of that work in the next video. But for now, thanks for watching and a massive, massive thank you to everyone who has donated or otherwise supported this project. It does make a huge difference and it means that we're able to keep on doing this work and I'm able to keep on making and editing these videos. So I really, really appreciate it. And I'll see you next time. Cheers.